Sometimes with van life, you end up in the most bizarre places. I just pulled up to the Nose Hill parking lot here. I was just in the Vivo Center, the public library, for seven hours editing these videos. What do you think the odds are that I get uh, kind of pulled out of here and, you know, the knock <laughs> late at night? This place is apparently open till 11. There's two pit toilets and two outhouses. It's, you know, it's got garbage right here. It's got everything I need right now. Dang, I'm looking scruffy, a bit of uh, shape, and uh, i got to cut my hair tomorrow. This looks like a mess. <laughs> Most amount of stealth, you can see the parking lot. Probably behind that bush would be good, or over there, but that's right near the toilets, and that's going to smell. So the next best option is just kind of two over right in this corner where I'm almost at. I'm going to probably move there, try that spot. There's a really amazing blood moon, or maybe it's a, it's a blood sun. Because uh, there's all this forest fire smoke, so it's making it look like a blood moon, but it's actually the sun. It's blocking out part of the light right now. It's, it's sometimes the forest fires they do have a, a couple cool <laughs> side effects. Apparently, all those forest fires are coming from the north up in Yukon and uh, BC and Upper Alberta. So it's kind of like, if it doesn't clear out, I don't know where to go. The thing I do know is I haven't eaten anything in eight hours, so I'm gonna grab some food here and uh, I'll kind of relax after all that editing. Alrighty, so we've got some uh, chickpea quinoa salad my mom made, also some banana bread she made. So <laughs> that's my dinner. And then, oh, I got some vegetables here too. So all I can do is just sit around and edit and kind of relax while my leg heals. My ankle ballooned up pretty bad yesterday we're on day four of three, three or four, uh, after I hurt my leg. When I did the Great Glacier Trail, I snapped my ankle on some of that rock like that, really pretty sharp, and it, it pulled the tendon all the way up here. So for the past couple of days, I haven't been able to lift my foot like that. I can now, but I get pain right there. For me, it's pretty tough. I'm not like the typical van lifer where I'm just cooking and going and seeing museums or whatever it is. Uh, I bag peaks, I hike mountains, I go see glaciers. I want to film stuff people have never filmed before. I go hike places people have rarely gone. And that's what I like to do. I like to bring unique things to you guys, to the world, uh, with my drone, my cameras, etc. And so <laughs> to be able to not go out and do that really sucks in the prime of summer. But I do know if I give it four days and I just leave it alone, it will heal. And then I can get back out there with something that's not too intense. I need to work up as well. So I'll just set up for the night here and a little gopher. I think it's a gopher tried to, he was snooping around my car. I was trying to get in and I kind of, I was starting to look around, maybe go somewhere else, but it's just, it's so, so hard to find a park that I found one park after a bunch of searching that had uh, no house across the, uh, the road on the other side. You could park on that side of the street, et cetera, et cetera, except the road was like this super steep so you can't you, there's no way you can sleep in that and i decided yeah whatever i'm just gonna sleep here with the gophers see you guys tomorrow have a good night i'll see you in the morning good morning i slept well here at nose hill park i've got a few objectives for the day i need to go up this hill behind me one of the nose hills i gotta test out my leg i snapped my tendon so i need to go test it out to see how it's doing i think i've got two or three days left on the healing i need to, sh to cut my hair and shave i look like an absolute mess look at me so this is gonna be a little bit tricky. I have some razors and stuff to shave this, but I actually have to run my vehicle, and my alternator <laughs> to run the thing that will cut my hair. I've got a new power solution coming in. Now, if you haven't been following me from the beginning of this road trip, my EcoFlow River Pro uh, overloaded it. I don't know, melted, the fuse popped, something burnt out. It doesn't use, it doesn't work. It's an absolute brick. I can't charge anything. It's just basically a 20 pound weight sitting in my car. It fried on the first day of this road trip and customer service, Still hasn't given me a, a ticket here to a label to send it back. It's been a week and a half. So anyways, we're going to have to use my alternator, run my car to cut my hair today. But first, let's go up this hill and see what's going on up there. Look at the beautiful flowers and this thistle. There's also this red berry over here. I don't know what this is. Very unusual. bedding man I would say these are Saskatoon berries is this Saskatoon bush there's some berries on here beautiful 
beautiful little rolling hills. Oh, that's enough elevation gain, probably 30 meters, 100, 100 feet, something like that. Uh, the real test is going down. Going up was not really the problem for me with my tendon. It's going down. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. So the result of that, my foot, a um, little bit tender, but no sharp pain. I'm actually impressed. It's a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. So that's pretty good. I still need to give it a couple days. That's about, I don't know, 100 feet of gain. And if you're doing a mountain that's say 3,000 feet, then you'd be doing that 30 times. There's no way I could do that 30 times right now. Maybe 10 before it really was in a lot of pain. So I kind of have to just remember that. I'm just, it's time to cut my hair. This is an absolute mess. I look like a cartoon character here. Switch into this razor. Uh-oh. No, we're not. I guess it got turned on somehow. It's got no power. Oh well. So I have to do. Now it's time to cut the hair. All right. So I got my car on. This is plugged in. Let's see if it works. Uh oh, uh -oh it doesn't. Take two. Ah. So it wasn't quite plugged in, or it got flipped off. So it does work. Perfect. All right. Now let's uh, <laughs> try to make this work. Limited reach here. I need to use this. I can officially check off uh, cutting my hair in Nose Hill Park off my bucket list. <laughs> Probably someone's gonna think it's just someone was shaving a dog or something. Uh, a little bit of hair down here, <laughs> just a little bit. So it's time to uh, go have a shower. I'm gonna be meeting up with one of my oldest friends. Uh, probably my oldest friend today, so. Found a shower here, there's one here. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Hey, it works. So I just had a shower and see, not too bad. A little haircut here. Not the most uh, comfortable thing doing sh <laughs> shaving your head in the parking lot. Alright, so next day here, I'm still configuring my gear here. I'm um, just at my mother's house and I'm, my foot is almost healed and I'm also waiting for a new power uh, station to come in because my EcoFlow River Pro is broken and they still haven't gotten back to me. The customer service is pretty bad. I'll reveal right now, so what I'm doing out here is I'm going to film some glaciers, but not just film glaciers. I'm going to recreate a bunch of photos from the 1900s, like 1903. There's some from 1914, 1927. These are mountaineers that went up into the glaciers around Jasper and Banff. They took photos of the glaciers and I've mapped out exactly where I think they're exactly standing and which direction they're looking. And I'm going to recreate all the photos to show how much the glaciers have melted in the past 100, 120 years. Now, some of these photos will be easy to recreate like Athabasca Glacier because there's roads that go right up there. But some of them are in the middle of Timbuk nowhere and are quite dangerous to get to these spots. So wish me luck. I just got my new Blue Eddy uh, power system, power station here. It's so not sponsored. I just got this from the Prime Day deal on Amazon. This is cool. It's got four plugs. This is a 11, uh, does it say here? Yeah, 1152 watt hour. So my EcoFlow is a 720 watt hour. Um, this one's noticeably bigger, but it's almost double the power. It's got 
all the plugs on this side, which is nice. EcoFlow had them on this side, and you had to turn on a separate button for it. So it's like you had to have two areas kind of open. This one is just like you leave one area open, the rest can be flush put in your vehicle, which is a lot nicer. And then it's got the USB, it's got the 100 watt, and then four other ones. Um, it's got the plug here, which goes into the car or the solar panel. This is the out plug for like a fridge, like a Domenica or something. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, there's a few other buttons here. I know what they are, AC and DC buttons. It's also got a wireless charging up here for a phone. I don't have a new enough phone to take advantage of that, but that's cool. And then it's just got the main plug, reset button, and whatever this thing is. If we take a look here, this is my broken EcoFlow River Pro. And you can see it's got, see all the plugs are on the side here. And then the other plugins are up here on this side. So you actually have three areas open, which makes it hard to store in your vehicle. But yeah, this thing sadly just, it's dead. You can turn it on has no power. Uh, you can charge it, but you can't have this thing charge anything. So useless right now. The speed this thing charges is absolutely insane. So I got the buttons here, AC, turns on the, uh, the AC outlets. DC turns on the DC outlet. So like this is mostly for a fridge. I quite like the handles are on the top and it's flat. But you can see the EcoFlow has the handle here. So you can't do anything about that. It's a really obnoxious, kind of shape to have this on top here. So once I get my EcoFlow repaired, what I'm going to do is have my solar panel go into one of them and the AC from the car go into the other one. And then I'll have to figure out which one is which because the solar will charge quite a bit during the day, especially the hot summer sun. But if I'm doing a lot of driving, then maybe it makes more sense to have that go into the bigger one because one has, the blue eddy here is almost double the amount of storage space, so. Aside from plugging this in and testing out a bit, I haven't used this yet, but I'll link it up down below if you guys want to check it out. What is going on out here? Look at this! Whoa! It's hailing! Hailing in July! Whoa! This is crazy! This is absolutely insane! I want to run out here to go get my zoom lens, but it's way too dangerous! There's like millions of hail coming down! for my mother who went golfing. Yeah. My vehicle's getting pounded by hail. My poor solar panel up there. It's going nuts out there, absolutely nuts. Coming up, my brother gives me a tip on an amazing riverside location and the cabin fever gets the best of me as I bust out back into the woods for a massive hike, one of the biggest I've done in the past 12 months. You're not going to want to miss this. <laughs> 